Hi, and welcome back to round 3 of the 4 and CL. Uh, I was actually going to do something a bit different for this one and record this game live, uh, but the game actually went on for about 2 hours, and I don't think anyone really wants to watch a 2 hour video, so I'm just going to recap the game as normal instead. Um, so yeah, I've got the white pieces, and nothing else really to say apart from getting into it. So now I have 3 as I play. Uh, G6 for my opponent, this probably means that he's going to go into a King's Indian or Grunfeld setup. So I play C4, Bishop G7, uh, D4. Often I don't play D4 in my openings uh, before, my opponent plays d5 just because c5 i don't really want to go into benoni or benko uh, but in this position it's actually okay because you can play e4 and then this transposes into like a silly uh, sicilian proxy bind uh, sort of structure so that was fine with me uh he plays d6 so signaling he's probably going to go into the king's indian and he does um and we get pretty much the standard kinsing and doom moves. I'm not going to go over them too much from here. Uh, this point, though, is a bit interesting. Uh, I will say that pretty much every move that black plays, uh, knight c3 is the best move. And it, I mean, it just looks natural, seems natural, apart from uh, c5. And I think there's a really strong move here, which is to take on c5, take back, and then knight e5, uh, which is really good. And the reason why I mention this is because my opponent plays knight e7 first, and then after knight c3, then he plays c5. And unfortunately, I can't play the same idea, because obviously this would just hang in a lot. <laughs> hang a knight and that would just be bad so already as of sort of move uh, seven this was a key point i thought to think about the position um what, what do i want to play um i could push and play d5 and i think that's probably fine uh, but i thought the position that i was more used to um sort of the style wise was actually just to play e4 this is a uh, typical opening move in my openings uh, the opening move in my openings and yeah i just think this leads to a nice position so you can take on d4 and then i take back and then i've got this really strong bind over the center and my bishop has a nice place to go to uh, behind the pawn i'm going to play h3 so there's no uh, knight g4 to hit my bishop and uh, yeah I, I feel like my game plan's super simple just bring everything to the party um so he attacks my pawn now one of the things that this is probably a weird mistake that i keep on making is that i often for some reason in my mind kept on there was a period that i kept on blundering the pawn on c4 because of this exact same move and because i've done it so many times now whenever my opponent plays um knight uh, d5 uh, e5 sorry this is something i always uh, look out for now so i just play b3 and of course this is yeah <laughs> playable but for some reason in my head i keep blundering that pawn in practice games um but yeah he develops attacking my queen uh I, this move was a bit odd uh, it just seems like i can kick him away with f3 and the advantage of f3 as well is i control the g4 square so now it's easier for my bishop to come to e3 so he moves back I do play h3 anyway. Uh, the reason why I did this rather than playing bishop e3, although bishop e3 I think is completely playable, is that if I play bishop e3 immediately, then it's actually quite hard for me to guard um, h3 square. The computer likes g4, but this just seems a bit awkward. Whereas if I play h3 first and then queen c7, then I can play king h2, and this is always guarded. So uh, that's why I played h3. I think it's completely fine and playable move. So yeah, <laughs> um, he brought his knight back. So it wasn't doing too much in the central, so it could be uh, susceptible to sort of tempo moves with f4. Uh, I developed my bishop. He brings his knight back, clearly with the idea of playing uh, f5 at some point, because this is his main break. I mean, if he doesn't play f5, I feel like he's really not doing much. I play queen t2, just connecting my rooks, also maybe uh, putting this idea as well. Now, this bishop is probably i mean it is black's best piece but also this bishop is my best piece so although it looks like i'm going to trade i'm probably not actually going to because uh, surprisingly this bishop is even better than this bishop and uh sort of how useful it is for your side uh but my opponent took in the center i took back now he could trade in the center and i think that's probably what he should do uh, but he instead moves his knight and so i just keep developing bring my rooks to the uh, the area that i want them i mean i could put it on the semi-open file but my plan originally was just to push down uh these pawns and this is how i felt that i was going to make uh, my advantage but here my opponent plays uh, a move which i think is just a, a mistake <laughs> um now this mistake is actually really common i think um he plays e5 which does seem to get a tempo against my bishop but now this square is incredibly weak and this d6 pawn is just a massive weakness and in the game and when i was uh, recording it live I was super happy to see this move and it just means that yeah i've now got a target sort of this f4 push is a lot harder of an idea to get through whereas this target here i think is actually quite easy to go after so you have to bring my bishop back 
Yeah, well, that's his bishop trying to control this square that he's just given up, so my knight can't jump in. But I can just bring my rook back across. I'm not really wasting any tempo because it's actually super hard to guard this pawn now. I don't think really you can add another defender. I mean, you can play knight e8, but that just seems super rough. And then I'm probably just going to put my knight in the center or play f4. And yeah, this just seems really good for uh, white. So instead he played uh, a6 so the idea of just stopping the knight coming from this way because again i guess the, if you go back here then i can bring my knight here as well um so he stops that but now i can just pin his knight i'm not even in a rush to take this pawn i mean i could take it but i don't think he can defend it so i might as well just uh, bring more uh, pieces in he moves his queen out of the way um i will say the one thing you have to be slightly careful of is if you did with this because you just want to make sure, but you can just always take here, so there's no way to guard it. I mean, the idea was that he was going to bring a rook here, but it, there's just not enough time. Uh, so he brings his queen this way, but of course I can now just take. He takes, I take back. And now uh, this knight is here. Uh, my rooks are coming to the file. I'm up a pawn. I feel like the opening has been a massive success for me at this point. And yeah, the game's just going really well. Um, now my opponent yeah, attacks my rook. Seems natural. There's actually not many squares for my rook to go to, because these are all pretty much covered apart from back here uh, but I'm happy to go back here so I can just double up I didn't want to go one foot back further because I might at some point give him a tempo for no reason so yeah just go to this square instead he develops his knight uh, I mean yeah it makes sense because otherwise you're sort of blocking your rooks uh, but if you don't uh, play f5 then I don't know what black is really playing for I feel like this was his best try to get some sort of counterplay uh, even if he's down a pawn uh, but he plays knight uh, f6. I just take control of the file, seems to make sense. Um, he sort of uh, guards the pawn. I think there were some sort of potential ideas against his rook. Oh, yeah, back in this position as well. If he's not careful, I can actually just win the rook. So I guess uh, that's maybe why he played this. But again, if he plays the sneak, bring this rook this way. Uh, sorry. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, just bring my knight to the center. I feel like this is a super strong move. He's pretty much forced to trade because otherwise this fork is coming and that would just be devastating. And then once he trades, then I've got a, a pass pawn and this position is now even easier for me to convert. Supposedly, we'll get to whether I convert it or not in a second. But yeah, I'm just taking small advantages bit by bit. I feel like my position is getting better and better um, because of my bishop on b6 another advantage it wasn't just to pin the knight but also it means that he can't push this pawn at any point so he never really gets any counterplay and again if he's not playing f5 then i don't really see what his play is uh, he brings this bishop back i now move my rooks over to the open file which i think makes sense the computer really likes this move bishop c7 here and it sort of just locks uh black in and it plays d6 and then I assume over the next sort of 20 or so moves, it just gets this bigger and bigger advantage, takes more and more space, and just claims that black has no move. And it is actually kind of true, because, I mean, black really can't move any of their pieces. Um, but it's, this isn't something I saw. I just played uh, rook c1. This is still good. White is still winning. Um, but yeah, bishop c7 was even better. Brought his king over. Um, I yeah, just took a bind on the position. Backing the spawn. Uh, he moves his king again. Now, I can't take this pawn, obviously, because this would just uh, lose the rook. So I'm not actually threatening to take. And if I play something like this, uh, then he's just going to take me before I can do it. I mean, white is still better still up a pawn, but I wanted to keep rooks on the board. Um, so I improved my king. I feel like everything else is improved to the maximum. <laughs> Might as well just bring more pieces in. I, the computer liked f4 and it also liked d6, but um, I feel like king f2 is a completely natural normal move. He brings this bishop back. Now, I've, maybe this is why d6 was stronger back here, because the point is that you can now meet this with this move, and now black really has no moves to do. Whereas if you play uh, king f2 like I did in the game, you can't now play this, because this would just drop the pawn, and if anything, black might be better. Um, so yeah, that's probably why d6 is better, but I feel like king f2 is so natural. Yep, just keep bringing the king. And then he attacks my rook, and this sort of forces a trade of everything. Um, I wanted to keep the rooks on the board, uh, but unfortunately I don't think I can anymore, so I had to trade. And we got into this endgame, where I'm up a pawn. I, really, I'm the only one that's actually going to be playing for winning advantages. And if anything, this is sort of where the game begins, uh, because everything up to this point 
to me at least seem fairly natural and fairly straightforward but i will say end games are probably my weak spot and it's not something i really practice at all like i practice openings i practice tactics but i've never really studied end games and that has probably hurt my play quite a bit because i'll get to positions where i could go into a pawn up end game like this and then i'd rather not and i'd rather keep pieces on the board just because i feel more comfortable with more pieces on the board um because here really I don't have any principles to go off. I'm just sort of just playing what I feel is right. So I play at four. This is fine. And just taking more space takes takes. Bring my king to this side because I feel like this is where uh, I'm going to create the weakness. He does have a blockade for now, but sort of in my mind I was thinking that at some point he's going to have to run out of moves, and it might take a while. But I can just slowly improve my position. I've got nothing to lose here. Uh, I'm the only one that really can be playing for a win. I just grab more space, bring my king in, king in more, he plays h5. Now this h5 move, um, it is nothing, I think it's actually was really good and if anything uh, it becomes a problem for me later on as we're going to see uh, because him gaining space here is actually going to create a bind because something I just wasn't aware of at all is that if this pawn comes to h5 then controls these two squares and then now my king can't actually enter the board on this side and we'll see that that's going to become an issue later. So I play bishop c5 he plays h5 and then I trade and I thought this trade was good for me because I was like oh look these pawns are on light squares I like square bishops going to target them, and with less uh, pieces on the board, there'll be less um, sort of less pieces for him to move, less pieces on the board, less pieces to move. But it just means that he's more likely to be in Sogzwang, and that's how I'm going to win in this bishop endgame. Now, I was actually mistaken, and the computer really dislikes this bishop trade, and to be honest with you, I genuinely can't explain why. Um, I don't have endgame knowledge enough to know why keeping the bishops on the board uh, was good. Um, and again, I'm just playing on intuition, which has served me well so far to this point. I'm up a pawn and was doing well. But yeah, I just can't explain to you why uh, trading bishops is bad. And I would like to know. Um, but yeah, the game continues. I play h4. And you can see, again, why this was an issue for me. It's that now the king, at no point can I like run into this side of the board and try to create weaknesses because this just to bind here. Um, he then puts his pawns on dark squares, which makes sense, because then they're no longer targets on my light square bishop. And what you're going to see here is a bunch of shuffling. Now, my opponent at this point plays uh, king c7. And this end game, for the most part, is going to be drawish, apart from this moment here. And perhaps pause the video, and this is... Uh, I mean, there's been loads of crucial points in this game up to this point, but this is the crucial game, and perhaps try find the winning idea here for white and i think this is really hard to spot or at least was for me as you can tell by how poor my um end game knowledge is so this position is actually quite hard to go through with a computer even because it, it starts saying that there's only one particular line that is really crushing but then the other line is also apparently crushing so the move to spot really is to take first I'm not sure why you have to take first. This is why I'm a bit confused about the inconsistency and why you can't play the main idea immediately. But the main idea is to play b4. And when uh, black takes on b4, it's not to take back here because apparently this is also a draw, but it's now to play e a5. And if b3 is played, the only, again, the only winning moves, these are all only moves, by the way, is to play a6. And then if the king comes around to collect the pawn, then you're in time. You're not in time to, sorry, you're not in time to stop it, but you can play d6 here. And then if pawn ta if king takes and you've got this tactic and then you're promoting. And yeah, um, this is like a eight move sequence from back here where you've got to find a bunch of only moves. Um, and it does make sense. And in the uh, two hour recording that I had of this, when my opponent played... Um, King c7, yeah, King c7. I was visibly sort of shocked by this because I thought, oh, this looks really risky. And the moves that I was looking at was King c5. Now, unfortunately, this is completely winning, apart from the move b6, which I saw, and then my king sort of has to go back, and I don't really feel like I've achieved much. But even now, the computer was went from saying that this is wait, this it gives as a draw 
but now this it gives this as winning. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is hard to go through. Um, this is the kind of thing that you really need like a chess coach or a stronger player to go through because I don't think that it's hard. It's easy, sorry, to understand what Stockfish is saying and how to uh, sort of analyze this position. And it's something that I'd have to sort of know the ideas behind rather than just uh, move by move going through it because yeah, it's really complicated. Uh, but unfortunately for me. I didn't take, I didn't play b4, and I played uh, bishop e2, and you're going to see that this light square bishop, perhaps why the computer hates me trading the dot square bishops, just really isn't doing much in this position. And yes, I'm up a pawn, but once the king comes to uh, e6, d6, sorry, there's just going to be a blockade, and there's not really much I can do about it. I tried shuffling about a bit, and uh, tried to get my king in here, but there's no way that my king's ever coming. I did try to set some traps up for my opponent as well so uh for example in this position was it this position yeah he can take take uh but this is losing for uh for black because of king e3 which is a really nice move and i did spot and i was really hoping i was going to fall for this uh similarly there's uh another trap here if he takes here then this is also winning for <laughs> for white. So yeah, I just wanted him to trade the bishops, and he might have thought that, oh, I'm winning a pawn here. Uh, but actually, yeah, this is just completely lost after king e3. But yeah, and credit to my opponent, he didn't fall for any of this, and he actually managed to hold this end game, and he just shoveled backwards and forwards and not doing anything, and that's the correct thing for him to do. And as much as I tried to bait him into taking <laughs> and losing the game, he never did, and eventually, after sort of 60 moves, we repeated and went for a draw, because I couldn't see any way further if he wasn't going to accept uh, my bait. Uh, yeah, so the game ended peacefully in the draw. A bit disappointing considering I really did feel like I had the advantage here. But yeah, it just shows that I need to work on my end games because there were clearly a lot of ideas here that I just didn't understand. Cause at some points I was sort of like, I was about plus two from the middle game after getting up that pawn and I just sort of failed to convert it and I could have been a lot more accurate. Um, and this game really I feel like I have to study a lot if I need to improve on it. But yeah, I, I mean, a draw to draw is not a terrible result. I didn't lose or anything. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching and stick around for more chess.